Um, so a little diversion. So I saw in your, I think it was in the book or, or maybe it was in one of your videos. I actually, I think it was the HDL video. So in terms of trying to increase your HDL. So one of the things you do is so coconuts, but also walnuts. So, you know, I really like nuts, um, but for every nut, there seems to be like a negative, like, so almonds have phyt phytic acid or phytates in them. And, uh, and walnuts are meant to have high omega-6. They have high omega-3, but they also have high omega-6. So I just wondered, so kind of what, what are your favorite nuts? And in particular, do you, do you have macadamia? Which ones do you eat? And do you, do you eat macadamias? Do, do you think, do you like them? Yeah, so um, I'll eat anything as long as it results in positive data for my biomarkers. So right now in my apartment, I've got sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, almonds, peanuts, cocoa beans to make chocolate. I had chocolate today, a bunch mm. of it. Um, walnuts, uh, coconut butter, not coconuts, but the coconut butter, which they basically take the coconut meat and the milk and they blend it and it. It's a consistency like peanut butter. Yeah. So I'm getting fiber in there as opposed to most people who just eat coconut oil, which has nothing but fat. So, um, you know, if I had a preference, I'd eat the cocoa beans uh, every day, not by themselves, but cocoa beans, I mix them with dates and that's basically chocolate. I mean, chocolate is the cocoa bean, but it's processed. So they take the fiber out, which is insane because it, it's a super high fiber food. And then they mix it with sugar and, you know, that's essentially chocolate. So I mix the cocoa beans with dates. And when I, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a totally different uh, texture and taste versus store-bought store chocolate. So if I had my preference, I'd eat nothing but that. But uh, as you mentioned, walnuts, you know, uh, so I, I, because I track my diet every day, I noticed that in correlations between my diet and dietary components with HDL of those nuts, that all those nuts that I listed, it were the, it was the, the saturated fat rich nuts, coconut butter and uh, cocoa beans, and the omega-6 rich nuts being uh, uh, actually uh, sunflower seeds and uh, walnuts, but not so much sesame seeds, which were, which are also omega six, six rich, um, were all positively correlated with my HDL levels. And some of them were close to significance over, I think, 12 measurements over the past two years. But when I took the sum of those four nuts, the coconut, coconut bean, uh, uh, cocoa beans, coconut butter, walnuts, and sunflower seeds, when I took the sum of that and looked at the correlation with L, uh, HDL, now it was some you know, very high correlation of like 0 0.9 or with a, you know, very highly significant p-value. So my current, you know, uh, uh, hypothesis, you know, is to, or current dietary test is I've increased, you know, uh, or I, I'm, I'm focusing almost completely on those nuts because if they do have a causative role in raising my HDL, I should expect to see my HDL go up from 40 on my last measurement to somewhere in the 50s. Um, so, uh, and, you know, based on the correlation, I've got to get more than about 70 grams of those nuts on average per day to get to about 50 milligrams per deciliter. So I, I'm betting that's how it's going to, you know, go down. Um, now, is it because I'm getting those nuts in my diet or because I'm taking out carbohydrates for those equivalent amount of calories? I don't know. Uh, and it's hard to do that experiment, but, uh, so, but it, it could be different for everyone, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, which dietary components affect their biomarkers. Uh, what, so for what works for me may not work for everyone else. Now, in terms of the omega-6 story, um, you know, it's an essential fatty acid. So our bodies don't make, um, you know, uh, uh, linoleic or linolenic. I can't remember which one is the omega-6. I always get them confused because they're so close instead of, you know, just an N. One has an N and the other doesn't. But I, I have a, a blog on my website about, you know, um, what percentage of the diet has been shown to be uh, associated with lowest risk of all-cause mortality for omega-6 levels? So um, that said, I would, you know, I, I, I'm always trying to promote whole foods, you know, getting your omega-3 or your omega-6 or any of these fats from whole foods as opposed to getting them from the seed oils, which is, you know, nutrient poor and, and, and poor quality food. Um, now, in terms of things like almonds and or any other uh, foods having components that can negatively affect health, you know, the argument I always say is if these things, whether it's oxalates and spinach or, you know, lectins and almonds or, or, or um, you know, stuff like that, whatever, you know, lectins and beans or, you know, pick your, pick your quote unquote poison, the reduction is poison. If that were as true as it's made out to be uh, made out to be by many people, you'd see increases in all cause mortality risk with an increase in almond consumption or an increase in uh, 
uh, lentils or legume consumption or an increase in walnuts or other nut consumption. But in fact, the opposite is true. We see uh, decreases in all-cause mortality with an increased consumption of these foods. So um, I think it's very easy to pigeonhole certain foods into reductionist science. But what is the whole, what is the bigger picture show? And going back to my biomarkers, again, not to say, you know, not to flex and be like scoreboard, you know, because when somebody's saying something in the game and you're like, man, I'm beating you by 30 points, look at the scoreboard. Um, you know, my, I, I think I'm doing an okay job so far because, you know, the biomarkers are pretty good. So. Right. Yes. But, the, but, but along those lines too, sorry, Richard. Uh, yeah. but the other interesting correlation that I saw is, um, so the higher my HDL, that's actually correlated with lower C-reactive protein for me. Mm. And on my last couple of measurements, my CRP has gone from around 0.4 milligrams per liter to 0.8 and 1. So uh, one reason for that may be because I reduced my fat intake and increased my carbohydrate intake. So, um, I, so increasing the HDL story may contribute to my reduction in CRP and inflammation uh, and and that links the nut story to it. So I just think, you know, the tracking the diet stuff is just very interesting. And, and I'm, I'm discovering all kinds of things in terms of what may be op the optimal diet for me to optimize my circulating biochemistry. Right, so do you worry about saturated fat? Um, Cause I mean like the American Heart Association, I think saturated fat, like very bad. Um, is it something you worry about? Cause uh, nuts have high saturated fat, but also things like butter and so I do, I do worry about saturated fat and I worry about that two ways. One, without the coconut, butter, so nuts don't have a lot of saturated fat. Generally, most people get their saturated fat from animal products, but aside from uh, fish every day, the sardines every day, a small amount, small can of sardines every day and full fat yogurt, um, I don't eat a lot of meat anymore aside from that uh, because I'm already getting enough animal products. I mean, 80 grams of sardines, you know, 250 grams of yogurt, and then I have whey protein, which is also animal products. So I'm getting, you know, 400 grams maybe or so uh, per day of 300 to 400 grams per day of animal products. So, um, and cheese, I should mention cheese, uh, you know, that's in my diet too. So saturated fat is also in cheese, but the saturated fat that's in uh, animal products is different from the saturated fat that's in things like coconut butter. So coconut butter has got short, uh, uh, medium chain saturated fatty acids. So with eight, 12, and up to 14 carbons, whereas the saturated fat that's in animal products is more of the 16 carbon and 18 carbon. These fatty acids have different effects, have different effects on, on physiology. So, but um, without the coconut butter in my diet, my diet is actually a very low saturated fat diet. I mean, it's around 5% of my total calories. And what's quote unquote recommended by the uh, USDA, the USDA Dietary Guidelines, they recommend less than 10% of uh, total calories to be from saturated fat. So based on that, without coconut butter, I'm quote unquote good, right? But, you know, I'm a big believer in going beyond a dietary ideology, whether it's from the USDA or wherever, and actually seeing what's the effect on, on your biomarkers. So, uh, and along those lines, there's another lipoprotein called uh, lipoprotein A, which um, values that are, um, I don't remember the exact number, but it's, I think it's more than 30 milligrams per deciliter are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. And I, it's been reported to be more atherogenic than LDL. So for whatever reason, mine has always been higher than the high end of the reference range at around 40 milligrams per deciliter. Um, so uh, one thing that's been shown to bring that down is saturated fat. Uh, so it could be that my whole life, I have been eating a pretty low saturated fat diet, somewhere around 5%. And I noticed that one of the things that's correlated with having lower lipoprotein A levels in my diet is increasing coconut butter, which is saturated fat. So uh, right now, my total calories, I think, are somewhere in the 12 to 15% of total calories from saturated fat. But again, this isn't, you know, 15% coming from animal fats, the C16 and C18 fats, it's the coconut butter fats. But I do, I do worry about the effect uh, and the potential contribution of saturated fat in the heart, in the, in the heart disease story. But I'd argue that if my if that helps my HDL get to these you know centenarian ish fifty five or so levels, and it helps to keep my LDL you know in this one forty ish range, because I, I it's very easy for me to have very low LDL, and considering that there is all cause mortality data for having too low LDL being associated with an increased all cause mortality risk, um, 
HDL helps me keep that higher than this less than, you know, 100 or so. So, uh, but those are just associations. On my to-do list is to actually get a coronary artery calcium scan. And that's direct evidence that I've got atherosclerosis or not. So uh, you know, hopefully, you know, sooner rather than later, once coronavirus passes, I can go in and, uh, and get that scan done. And hopefully my arteries are free, free and clear. Um, and if they're not, I'll have to come up with a dietary strategy to, to, to slow it slash reverse it. Um, yeah. So, no, yeah. I, that makes sense. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.